So I'm into the web events area of our application, specifically in landing pages. I already created a header record here in web content for my landing page. And now I'll show you what's new when I open the designer. So this is what our new landing page designer looks like. You see a design canvas occupying most of the space here on my screen on the left. And on the right, we have three tabs of design elements. The first tab is general settings that apply to the entire page. So I can change the width of the entire uh, page itself. I can adjust alignment of the content. I can set a background color for the entire page. Uh, I can set my default font that'll apply to all the various texts that I bring in on the page and so on. Next, I have rows. So each page is designed of a series of horizontal rows that are stacked from top to bottom. Each of those rows has a variable number of sections within it, and I can also easily control the amount of space that it sits between those different sections here manually. Each section is a bucket where I can place content, and there's a wide variety of types of content that can be placed into a section on a row. Let me show you how easy it is to complete this landing page. First thing I want to do is incorporate our Click Dimensions corporate logo at the top. I'll hit Image Manager and drag that into this top row. When I hit Browse, you may recognize that this is the same Click Dimensions Image Manager that's used throughout our marketing automation platform. You don't have to learn anything new. And you can also manage all the same assets across your emails, your forms, your surveys, and your landing pages. I'm going to choose this logo, hit OK, and there it is. This is the appearance that I want. I would like to come to the URL field, and I'll just add a link to our corporate main website, clickdimensions.com. So if a visitor on this landing, pages, landing page happens to click on the top of the page, they'll be directed here. I'm ready to move on next to a next row. I'm going to grab a row this time that's pre-formatted to have two equal sections, and I'm going to place it here. This row is going to have two video blocks that I'd like to make available right on the landing page. So I'm just clicking video and dragging and dropping again into the section. This is very easy. I'm going to click once on add a video URL, and you see here a properties window on the right. So I'm going to go over on my other screen, and I'm going to copy a URL into my clipboard and paste it here. And this is directing to video content that is hosted on YouTube. Alternately, I could have pointed to video content that's hosted on Vimeo as well. I'm going to do something quite similar for the one on the right. I'm just going to use a different video. So I'll come back over to my little file that you can't see, copy a hyperlink into my clipboard, paste, and there's a different video. These are the right videos. I didn't mess that up. This is the content that I want. I'd like to change the appearance just a bit. I think it would look nicer if I had a little bit of white space between these two sections. So I've clicked once on the section on the left. I'm going to open my padding options, and I'd like to place a little bit of white space on the right of that section. So I'm going to click that twice, and you see that all I did was make it slightly smaller. It stayed left justified within the total space of the page, but now I have a bit of white space. I'm going to do the same thing with the video block on the right so that they match. This time, I'm going to add space to the left. And there we go. So now it's nice and symmetrical. That's the look I'm after. Next, I'm going to add a row that has two equal sized sections, and I'll put it right below those video blocks. These will be my calls to action for the landing page. I'm going to drag a button to this block, and I'll change the text. I just double clicked, and I start typing. And the label will be request a demo. I'd like to change this button to link to a form. So again, I'm going to my cheat sheet here. I'm going to copy a URL 
and paste. And there's a form that's from one of our standard uh, website areas that captures information when someone wants to sign up for a uh, to be scheduled for a demo. I want to change the appearance of this button just a little bit. First of all, I want to uh, change the width. Right now, by default, any button is set to automatically size itself based on the amount of text that's inside and the size of that text. I'd like to manually make the button the width of the space. The other thing I need to do is adhere to our corporate standards because Erin is on and she knows that we need to be in compliance with our standard colors. It's right here in the color palette, very easy. I could repeat those steps very easily to make another button to request a demo here. But here's a button I wanna show off. This little icon represents copy paste. I click once and now I have an exact duplicate. I have a twin of the same button. I click, drag and drop, and there it is. Now in a real setting, I might direct this button to a separate URL so that we can see right off the bat if someone wants a demo of Intelligent Dashboards or Social. I'm gonna move on in the interest of time. Next, I'm gonna add a row that has three equally sized sections and I'm gonna place it right above these text blocks that I had put in earlier. When we represent information about these parts of our portfolio here at Click Dimensions, we commonly use standard icons to represent them visually. So I'm gonna go back to my image manager, I'll browse, go into this folder, and I see a familiar representation that we use here for marketing applications. I want another image manager block for marketing analytics. For this one, we use a trending bar chart. And finally, for services, we like to use an icon of this friendly expert who is ready to help. And there we have it. Just one more row and my content and layout will be done. So what I wanna do now is anchor the bottom of the landing page with a single section row that spans all the way across the bottom. I think it'll look nice to anchor this at the bottom in our standard dark blue here for uh, click dimensions. And in terms of the content, I wanna use a social block. So I'll drag and drop social and we see it's already pre-configured by default with four of the popular platforms. Now, if I click once inside of that content, I see here some properties that I can set. For example, I can change the standard look and feel of the buttons. I like the ones that came with it. I could hit delete on some of these and add different ones if our corporate standards are different social platforms than these. I certainly would go in and alter each URL to direct the visitor to the appropriate Click Dimensions account for each platform. I think the only thing I'll change is a little bit of visualization here on the layout. These buttons are quite close together and we have a nice bit of space here that's available. So I'm just gonna spread those apart a little bit for appearance. I like that a little better personally. And I'm also gonna make this a little taller. And there we go. Let's see how we did on my landing page. So I'm gonna save that content. And now I'm gonna to go to the upper left of the screen into a preview mode. And what I see right off the bat is that it has the look and the, and the content that I, that I do want. I see that when I hover over my corporate logo in the lower left portion of my screen, I see that it's linked to my corporate website. I see that I can play a video and I hear the audio in my headset. The one on the right is linked appropriately as well. I can see that my request a demo button is directing to my form. Everything looks good. Something else I can do though, is I can test responsiveness in different formats. Notice when I built this landing page, I didn't do anything at all to make this page responsive. It simply is. It's ready to go on different platforms. Now that doesn't mean that I did a great job of designing this particular page. 
so that it's presentable and usable on different layouts. Looks fine, I think, on both a desktop and a notepad. Let's see how we did for mobile. It is pretty heavy. There is a lot here on this page and it's a bit wide. We see what happened is it automatically stacked these controls for us, each of the sections. So what it did is it took each row and then each section within the row, it stacked from top to bottom. When the row on a wider screen is from left to right. The top part is okay, but I see one anomaly here on the mobile. I see two request a demo buttons. that are duplicates of each other. And I also see what happened here is my icons got separated from my text. Those aren't really needed in a mobile device. So I'm going to escape from preview mode here, go back to designer, and I'm going to show you how easy it is to just make a few little minor changes in the designer. When I click on this second button and I scroll down to hide on, I have an option to hide on mobile. I'm going to do that for the second button and for all three of these particular images. And that's it. That's all I had to do on my page. And now if I go back to the preview, I should see that it's identical as before on the two larger formats, but in mobile, I now have a page that's a bit more ready to consume on a smaller device. I have the one button and I don't have those additional icons because it's smart enough to know that the browser is visiting from a mobile device. My page at this point is ready to go. I could uh, use embed link just like I can with other types of content managed in click dimensions like forms or surveys. I can send links out or embed those in other places. Automatically, this landing page is tracked just like any other uh, uh, content with click dimensions, the tracking script is automatically embedded behind the scenes It tracked in our in our web analytics that we have built in with with click dimensions. Um, and uh, it's uh, and it's ready to go. There is one other capability that I'll show very briefly, um, just to give you some idea that there's another piece of integration with click dimensions that's very easy as well. Some of this is still being built out. But I will just show you initially that if I wanted to embed a click dimensions form, it works exactly the same way. I would just browse to the selected active form and select it, and then it would appear here and it would be tracked and I would have all the follow up actions, the full functionality that normally accompany any click dimensions form. Same goes for a survey. If I build an online survey and click dimensions and I want to include, and it's very small and crisp and gather just a bit of information right from the landing page, I can do it exactly the same way here. And that's it for my page.